I am Dr. Patrick Jackson, and I am currently the Chief of General Surgery here at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. I take care of a breadth of diseases and problems in general surgery. Many of them are minimum invasive procedures to fix whatever general surgery problems patients have. So it can range from anything from reflux disease or gallbladder disease to colon problems like diverticulitis or even to malignant diseases such as pancreatic cancer, gastric cancer, colon cancer. My favorite area to address uh, surgically is the application of minimally invasive techniques into general surgery. So trying to do maybe even the same procedure that we did 15 years ago but through small incisions because patients benefit from the size of the incision and the duration of anesthesia and the ability to get out of the hospital quicker. A significant portion of my practice is the management of gastroesophageal reflux disease. So patients come to me with complaints of heartburn. The key to gastroesophageal reflux disease is first, of course, to make the diagnosis. So you have to be sure that that patient actually has reflux disease to know that the procedure is going to help them. From a physiologic standpoint, GERD hasn't changed much. However, the treatment strategies have significantly uh, advanced uh, in the management of the disease and our understanding of how the disease uh, occurs and its progression. My favorite part of working here at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital would start with my patients, find them interesting as individuals and I invest in them as people first. After that, I would say my colleagues, in that I am surrounded by people who are very bright and hardworking and technically excellent at what they do. Oh, I love what I do. We as surgeons are placed in this unique position in patients' lives, that they come to us with a specific and identifiable problem. We get to help them with that problem. The best thing about this job is then seeing the patients come back to the office, having fixed the problem. It's incredibly rewarding personally and professionally. GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease is the washing up of gastric contents, contents from your stomach into the esophagus. The stomach makes acid. It's one of the things that it does other than churn up food. And so, because it makes acid, it protects itself from acid. The esophagus is just a motor tube that takes food from the back of your throat down into your stomach. So it doesn't make any acid. So it doesn't protect itself from any acid. So anything that washes up can burn the lower esophagus, and that's why it's called heartburn. If you have the sensation of chest pain or heartburn, the most common way to know whether or not it's GERD is actually a not only diagnostic but also a therapeutic strategy. Many patients who have the complaints of heartburn get started on something called a proton pump inhibitor, such as Prilosec, Nexium, Asifex, Protonix. Those are all medications that stop the stomach from making acid. And if that changes your pain, then it was likely that your pain was from acid washing up. When anything washes up into the esophagus, it can wash all the way up to the airway. And so you can have a cough, you could have recurrent pneumonias, you could have dental problems because when you lie down, the acid washes all the way up to your mouth and then can erode your teeth. It can irritate your voice box. It can cause a sensation of something not going all the way down, something getting stuck in your throat. There are a number of different presentations of it, but the most common would be heartburn. So there are many different diagnostic strategies to diagnose a patient with GERD, although by far the most common one is just to try them on a medication that stops their acid like a proton pump inhibitor. If you either have a problem from that proton pump inhibitor or we're not, still not sure of the diagnosis, there are some specific gastrointestinal procedures, diagnostic procedures that we can do 
to determine definitively whether or not your pain is from reflux disease. One of them is called a Bravo study where a small chip is implanted temporarily into the bottom of your esophagus just above the valve between the esophagus and the stomach. And then every time anything washes up from the stomach, the chip communicates with a small beeper-like thing that you wear that tells us whether or not you're having reflux. After a day or two, that little chip will fall off and go out in the rest of the intestinal tract. But during the time that it is implanted there temporarily, it gives us information about reflux of gastric contents into the lower esophagus. Those chips are implanted by endoscopy. So much like people will have a colonoscopy, you can have an endoscopy which goes down through your mouth and it can just be implanted and then the endoscope is pulled back out. The common treatment strategies start with non-medical therapy, such as elevating the head of your bed, not wearing tight clothing, and then changing your diet to reduce the amount of certain foods that will weaken the valve at the bottom of your esophagus. That valve is called the lower esophageal sphincter, and a number of things that we eat weaken your lower esophageal sphincter. Nobody knows if it's actually stress because you can't really, you know, a person's individual sense of stress uh, is so subjective okay. um, that there are some people who have stressful jobs but manage that stress in one way or another. And so there's, there's no real correlation between stress and reflux disease. Although reflux disease is clearly increasing in our population. If you look at the pattern of that disease entity, it is dramatically increasing in our population. Some common triggers for GERD are alcohol, chocolate, mint, spicy foods, citrus drinks. Many people say that the most common triggers you have are the things that would make for a great evening out, a nice uh, large, uh, tomatoes can also cause it. Um, a, a nice large Italian dinner with a glass of wine and a piece of mint uh, something afterwards, all of those will increase the amount of reflux that people have. The medications such as Prilosec, Nexium, Asifex, Protonix, all of those reduce the acid that your stomach makes, they do not stop things from washing back up. The valve at the bottom of the esophagus is called the lower esophageal sphincter. None of those medications change the pressure of the lower esophageal sphincter. They just make it so that the stuff that washes up is no longer acid. You have just as much reflux without those medications as you have with those medications. Just what refluxes is no longer acid. When you're on proton pump inhibition or PPIs for a long time, there have been a number of studies that show that it changes some of your electrolytes, such as your magnesium levels. It also puts you at higher risk for a cr problem called C. diff, which is an infection that can occur in your colon. The conceptual basis of that is when you stop making acid in your stomach, that acid, which previously had cleared out some bacteria from your intestine, allows more growth of bacteria in your intestine. Probably the two most common surgical procedures used to manage gastroesophageal reflux disease are called a Nissen fundoplication or what's called magnetic sphincter augmentation. Both of them have the effect of shoring up or strengthening the lower esophageal sphincter barrier and therefore limit the amount of stuff that can wash back up. Okay. Other than the magnetic sphincter augmentation, the Nissen fundoplication is considered the most effective strategy for the management of reflux disease. Some centers, in fact most centers, don't have 
access to the magnetic sphincter augmentation is therefore the most common procedure done for reflux disease today would be a Nissen fundoplication. A Nissen fundoplication is effectively sort of mobilizing up the bottom, por the top portion of the stomach and the bottom portion of the esophagus and wrapping the very top of the stomach around that valve, which effectively cants the valve forward a little bit and makes it more of a nipple valve and is very effective long term at managing reflux disease. It's been around for decades and is a very effective strategy. Another procedure that we do here that I do is known as magnetic sphincter augmentation. It's also known as a lynx. That is effectively putting a small magnetic series of magnets in a string-like fashion, almost like a bracelet, around the lower esophageal sphincter. And they open and close as you swallow, but when you're not actively swallowing, they put enough concentric pressure at the lower esophageal sphincter to make it a more effective anti-reflux barrier. Both procedures are incredibly effective at fixing reflux disease. Well, they're not 100%, like there are a few things that are 100% in patients. However, both of them are very effective strategies with most reports being over 80, sometimes over 90% of patients responding effectively to either strategy, one strategy or the other, for the management of their reflux disease. When patients are chosen appropriately, it's a very effective strategy for managing their reflux disease. The side effects of a Nissen, the common side effects seen from a Nissen fund application are some challenges in belching or vomiting because the valve is strong now and so it is more difficult to bring stuff up from your stomach into your esophagus or out your mouth. The early side effects of the Lynx procedure are, uh, the most common one would be dysphagia or difficulty swallowing. The concept behind that is that it is a foreign body, that it is a moving foreign body. So it's much like uh, an artificial knee or an artificial hip. Um, there will be early scar tissue that occurs around any of those foreign bodies that we put into people. That early scar tissue has to get broken down in order for this artificial valve to now work effectively. So after the Lynx procedure, we have people eating small meals more frequently to get that valve opening and closing and that breaks down the scar tissue early. It can take a variable amount of time, but most patients don't have that sense of what's called dysphagia. Most people don't have difficulty swallowing after a lynx, although a minority do, and so you have to work with them to make sure they just practice the swallowing mechanism and break down the scar tissue early. But most patients actually go home the same day of the procedure and eating a regular diet. Lynx is not done very widely at all. The number of centers that actually perform this procedure is very small and was, interestingly enough, very restricted by the company because they want to make sure that they get the best results for their patients. So most centers in the D.C. area, and in fact most centers across the country, don't offer this procedure because the company has decided to restrict the providers doing the procedure such that they get the best results for the patients. Gastroesophageal reflux disease can be a dangerous disease process for a number of reasons. Allowing stuff to wash up from your stomach into your esophagus and then down into your airway can create something called an aspiration pneumonia, recurrent bronchitis, challenges with vo vocal cords and, and irritation of the vocal cords. 
But also the chronic acid exposure has also been associated with esophageal cancer and injuries to the esophagus with strictures of the esophagus. So it's not something that should be taken lightly. Children can get reflux disease. And in fact, it can be even seen in infants who don't sleep well because they have reflux disease to start. It is a disease that spans the entire age spectrum from infancy to late age. So to get down into the weeds, there is this thing called a transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation, or TLESR. TLESRs, we all have them. People who have reflux disease just have a longer transient lower esophageal sphincter relaxation, or TLESR, than people who don't have reflux disease. Eventually, that valve becomes so weak that it is completely incompetent. And that's where people go from upright reflux, reflux they just have during the day but it goes away as they lie down, to bipositional reflux. And bipositional reflux is much more dangerous because their valve is basically just totally incompetent. Probably the best reason to come to Georgetown is the multidisciplinary team that we have put together to manage this disease process from GI and surgery uh, in which we can take care of all aspects of the disease whether or not you need an operation to fix it or not.